Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is Emily with FranNet, and I'm here with Heidi. Hi, Heidi. Hi, Emily. Hi. Thank you so much for taking some time today to, to tell us more about this particular business opportunity. Yeah. And this, this particular franchise was actually um, requested by many members of my team. So when I asked them, you know, what brands do you want to feature and do you want to, to let, you know, aspiring entrepreneurs, what do you want them to know about? And they said, this is what we want to tell people about. So a couple of reasons for those of you listening in, you know, why my team just thinks this is such an important um, concept these days is this is a recession resistant industry. And, and that's a common term. What I really like about this business is that it adds value. It adds volume to something that is one of the most near and dear things to our hearts. Uh, it is known for having an exceptional culture among the franchisees and with the franchisor. And for those of you who have ever had the opportunity to work with like-minded professionals and you know what it's like to work with people that not only think the way you do in terms of business but people that you really enjoy being around and you have shared values uh, that is something that is is highly known and recognized in this brand and frankly it's a really unique service with a fast turnaround so with that heidi will you please <laughs> tell us more about kitchen tuna you bet. I like what you were saying too. So I appreciate it. So my name is Heidi Morrissey and I am the president at Kitchen Tune Up. And one of the unique things about our business is that we are family owned and operated. So my dad started this company in 1988 based on a need that he found in the customer's homes. He was selling kitchen cabinets and he was at a time of recession and was looking for a way to bring some money into his business. And he realized that a service business would be helpful to keep his team working and to keep cash flowing and so he started just to fix up cabinetry and called it the tune-up and of course over the 32 years that we've been in business um, we have evolved and we have taken the business and changed it quite a bit. Um, the tune-up is still there. And when my dad retired in 2017 and I became president, um, I just decided to put a lot of attention and energy into um, technology and utilizing technology to help us scale our business without more hours. And so we have a great relationship. Um, we call our franchises Toonies. They call us homies. <laughs> <laughs> and when they when they get around for a while, they call themselves Tunasauruses. <laughs> so um, when you see a new franchise, they will sometimes call them the Baby Toonies um, out of complete respect. But they always know that they were there at one point and they can all help each other. So I always say the culture is um, not just driven by our home office, but it's driven by our entire system. And so we have a lot of fun together and we are really enjoying watching owners um, that have been with us now for, you know, some of them for 27 years um, and how they've evolved and had to change their business throughout that time as they grew up with us and you know now we get a lot of owners coming in with that expectation right up front that they're going to have all this technology and they're going to have they didn't go through all those growing pains you know they get to come right into it so that's been kind of fun so a little bit more about our brand so a lot of people put us into kind of like the um oh you must be a kitchen remodeler and i always say you know kitchen remodeling is one of the very small things we do it's really not even um, talked about that way. Most of what we're doing is we're taking an existing kitchen and we're making it better. But more than that, we're giving people an experience, something that they're excited about and they would love to have again with us. Meaning if we can do something after the kitchen, we will because we had such a great experience. And a lot of the things that we do, they're not like brain science things. They're kind of common, but at the same time, most home improvement companies are not following them. Just arriving on time. If any, if you've ever had to wait for somebody to show up at your house so that you could give them some money, you kind of know what that's about. Or maybe um, you've had somebody come over to give you a quote and they didn't get back to you for forever. Well, we quote right on site. And so the first time we meet with them, we're giving them pricing. And so there isn't this big delay. And so our brand is really about 
working with the customer at their level. And, you know, during this time of COVID, it's been very interesting to watch the new, um, the new normal um, start to emerge. And one of it is our virtual sales calls. And we're using um, different platforms like Zoom and GoToMeeting and FaceTime to um, have virtual sales calls with people. And we're closing deals virtually. It's really been an interesting way to get to know people and to go out and see their kitchen in a different way to making people feel comfortable. And the owners, because that we've been driving technology so hard for the last three years, they were ready to pick it up right in the moment and say, yeah, we can do a virtual sales call. And the customers are loving it. You know, they're home right now. They're hating their kitchen and they want to talk to somebody about it. They want to know what their options are. And we're finding that that pivot very quickly, like within a week um, of all of this happening, has really helped our business to continue to maintain that connection because we kind of, well, we used to say we're the brand that hugs. <laughs> <laughs> and so we hope we're going to still be the brand that hugs. But, you know, even if it's a virtual hug, you know, but why do we say that? And I always say that, listen, if if you want that kind of warm feeling of making a difference in someone's life and you're OK with afterwards, somebody wants to give you a hug virtually or real. Um, but people are so excited about their kitchen. I mean, there's a lot of home improvement that we do by force. Like we have to get a roof. We have to get, um, you know, a new water heater. We have to get windows. Um, but people love to get their kitchen done. And so it's a completely different experience. And because you're transforming a space where they're going to cook meals for their family, where they're going to celebrate holidays, um, they can't help but feel emotional about it. And so, you know, if you're ever feeling like, boy, I don't know if anybody really appreciates what I do, I can say that that's probably the biggest thing I hear from people. In fact, even our new baby tunies, once they go out, they call and they say, Heidi, you're right. They do want to hug you. <laughs> <laughs> They're always shocked by it. They're like, I, I thought you were just saying that. And I'm like, no, um, that's it happens. And then, of course, you get into our our culture, too. You know, as a family owned and operated business, you know, we're very close to our franchises. Um, people always say, do you know all your franchises? I said, well, yeah, I, I know all their names and their families and, you know, what their goals are. I think that's a really critical piece of our relationship is knowing that um, they're not a number to us. In fact, if they told me their franchise number, I wouldn't know what that was, um, but I know who they are. If they tell me their name, I, I, could, I could tell their location and their name. And I think that that is a part of a culture that we continue to nurture and even when I'm onboarding, you know, new new home office um, team members, which I've onboarded eight new ones this last year because we have grown so fast, one of the things we spend a whole day talking about our culture and talking about our owners, our franchise owners, and how much they gave up to have a business and what we need to do to help them to navigate that and to move that forward. And so they get to know everybody's name and story on their very first day of work because I go through a slideshow and I introduce them to every person and I tell them, you know, what they have done and what they've changed in their lives to make their dream come true. And so I think that's really a powerful piece of the culture. So well, let's I'm talk really about... Hi, yeah, go I got to tell you, I'm really happy. I, I, I just, how do I say this? The culture, I think, is it's beautiful to hear about. And the fact that there's such a strong culture when you are also making such a difference in people's lives. I mean, yeah. the kitchen is, is like the heart yeah. of the home. It's where we gather. It's where we eat. It's where we celebrate. Um, it's a place of significant connection for families. And it sounds like you guys have significant connection among yeah, the franchise I, I believe and the franchisees. We, yeah, I think our owners, first of all, they say that some of their best friends are in the system. Um, sometimes they become really good friends with their clients because again, there's something emotional about doing the big reveal that you see on TV when they pull back the bus or <sighs> move the- Right, <laughs> open right. The you know, there's something about that that gets everybody, right? And so, yeah. you know, within our services, we try to find different things we can do at any budget level. So if they don't have a lot of money, but they still would like to make an impact, we can do a one-day tune-up where we refresh the wood that's there. We can reface it by keeping the cabinets where they are, put new doors on, put a new facing on the cabinet so it looks like a brand new kitchen. So that's why I say we're not just remodeling because the remodeling happens with custom cabinets and we do do some, but so much of our work is done on the existing cabinets to update it and make it look better. And then we have recurring revenue like the granite tune-up. We've got lots of accessories and then we do closets, garage cabinets. It's funny because during this pivot time, the garage cabinets and closets 
an owner can do that on themselves. So we actually started a DIY plus program for people that didn't want to interact with humans right now, but they still wanted to get projects done. And it kept cash flowing into, you know, markets where maybe an owner was on a stricter lockdown, they were able to still do something. So they had those wow. options right away to start selling. So um, we talk a lot about being scalable. Um, so about 70% of our owners are home-based and that's what they enjoy. And they may stay home-based the whole time. Other people go into retail and then some people even go to a level of a developer where they want to grow multiple franchises over a certain period of time. So it's very scalable um, and helpful to kind of understand the goals of each person that comes through and we can all co you know live together we can all you know work together and kind of use the same tools even if I would rather be home based with very few employees or if I want to be retail and keep expanding out opening multiple locations as I go and as I mentioned, one of the big things we did was our operating system. And this has continued to grow every month. We kind of add components to the operating system. So we're always, um, it, it, the leads flow right into here from our website. Um, they get a call from one of our call centers right away. Um, it gets scheduled onto appointments and then we can start using this as an entire operating tool. So we can put all of our before and after pictures. We do all of our pricing in here, all of our invoicing. It all speaks to our QuickBooks, so it's great. All right, and of course marketing, there's just a ton of different marketing things that are happening. Obviously, when we have a pivot or a shift, our marketing team has to go into overdrive, which is definitely what's happened. Our PR firm jumped in right away and started writing um, new pieces for us. And we had lots of different new graphics coming up because you know there was a few weeks there, probably even maybe three or four weeks where it didn't feel like the right thing to do was to push a promo or a special. So we started doing other things. We started talking to people about what they could do at home with their kids. We started talking about, um, we did a spring cleaning challenge where people could clean a different part of their kitchen every day and share it. And that became super popular. We have like a couple thousand people in there sharing stuff. So we, sh we pivoted even the marketing to make the message make sense at the time. So um, obviously everything we're doing is a ton of training. Um, we're gonna have our first virtual training school in May and hopefully we'll get back in, into in-person trainings um, as soon as we can. But you know, we have people that want to launch and we wanna get their training going. So we're gonna do a virtual training. We do a lot of things um, for our owners like uh, a financial analysis every month and then a bigger one every quarter. We do weekly coaching calls. We have one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Um, it's just so much. We always are talking to our owners and in fact, over the last four weeks, we've been talking to every owner at least once a week just to check in and make sure everyone's doing great. So if you look at what a day in the life of a franchise could look like, it can really be just about anything. You know, you could be doing sales calls if you want to do those. You might be managing a team of people. You could be out doing some uh, chamber of commerce work or some B&I group or maybe even doing some mass media on radio or TV. There's a lot of different opportunities out there. And depending on the way you want your business to grow and the hats that you want to wear, you can certainly kind of determine the day that you want. So obviously lots more information that you guys can learn. But but um, I wanted to at least give you a, a little insight into our business today. That is awesome. Heidi, thank you so much. You cover a lot of information. <laughs> that was such a great overview. Thank you. And those photos make me really want to redo my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's really hard to be president and not change your kitchen like a lot. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Occupational hazard. Gosh. Well, thank you so much. And for those of you that are listening in, and if you'd like to learn more about Kitchen Tune Up, if you haven't already, the next step would be to complete your personal franchise assessment. I have provided a link here. It takes, I don't know, 20, maybe 30 minutes to complete this online assessment. You will get your results back. In, in a comprehensive 11 page report, which I or your local friend net associate can review with you in greater detail. And if you're not sure who your local consultant is, uh, feel free to contact me and I will arrange a personal introduction. So Heidi, again, thank you so much, everyone. Stay well, be well, best of luck on your entrepreneurial journey. And um, my kitchen's never gonna look the same. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Heidi. Thanks, everybody. Take care.